Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here, and it's Brick All O'Clock, with another package from Bricklink.com. Okay, let's open this. I'm uh, quite excited about this order actually, there's quite a few things in it uh, that I've been looking forward to, because uh, every time I get the idea for a project, I'm obviously missing a lot of the pieces, and... Um, some of those are more exciting than others, so when I do an order that's got some exciting pieces in, ooh, uh, then I anticipate receiving it a little bit more. That was a recycled Lego box, which is very clever, sort of tucked inside out. So, very good there. Just get rid of the paperwork to one side, which is surrounding the stickers. Yeah, so the stickers were actually the extravagance of this order, so I will start there. Uh, and there are some of the things that I was really looking forward to, I uh, even had on my list for quite a long time. And wow, that one is huge, isn't it? So you can probably work out what the first extravagance was. <laughs> yep. It was this sticker sheet from the Monkey Kid Team at Secret HQ, 80013. Uh, and I really wanted it, as probably everyone does, for this absolutely huge uh, advert for DH Shipping Co., uh, it's just really good colours in that teal uh, and some really good um, iconography here. And even the Chinese symbols, I think, makes it very realistic. So I really like that very much indeed. Oh, it's the police again. Oh, they've gone straight by, thank goodness. Um, and there's probably a few other stickers I can use on here. I think the monkey, if I can find a yellow background for that graffiti, I think that'll go really well. Solar panels are always welcome. Hey, my favourite, arcade games, so that's good. Uh, toilet sign with a cat, that could even work. Uh, and some rotting panels there in kind of dark green. Uh, yes, there's a few more that I can use. <laughs> that's quite an interesting alien sign, perhaps for my uh, alien cantina or something like that in due course. Uh, oh, and I can definitely use those at my noodle bar. So you see there's quite a few. Uh, but this was an extravagance because uh, this sheet on its own was actually £4, which to some of you might sound a lot, but believe me, they're going on eBay for over £10, and I just couldn't bring myself to buy it for that. Uh, but I've been looking out for them, and when I saw one for £4, that's when I pounced. Uh, so this whole store order uh, was basically drawn, or driven rather, by this purchase. Um, but fortunately, they did have quite a lot of other stuff that I can use uh, and that I wanted already. So it's not just about that, but that will be coming, uh, will be becoming an advert in Brick Nottingham before too long. You'd presume uh, near the harbour. Uh, so other sticker sheets in no particular order. There's this one, which I've kind of gone past a couple of times, but uh, I finally gave in. And that's for the Lighthouse of Darkness, 70431. Uh, which is obviously a hidden side set. Uh, and it's mainly for these damaged sort of white paintwork ones. And obviously the Grimsmouth Cove could be the uh, name of the opening near uh, the double rail bridge in Brick Nottingham, perhaps. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's all right. The Lighthouse of Darkness, I always thought was a fun name <laughs> or a funny name because it's kind of contradictory, I suppose. Lighthouse of Darkness. Maybe it shines its darkness on things. I don't know. Um... Okay, here's another smaller one. Ah, uh, yeah. So this one is from the uh, Wonder Woman vs. Cheetah set, which is also from 2020, 76157. Uh, and it was quite cheap, so I didn't spend too much uh, on it. But I did like the restricted access area sticker there. But also these ones here with all these television screens with kind of the uh, white noise on or the test cards or whatever. Uh, now... In that film, they're kind of taking over all of the signals to all of the TVs in all of the world. Uh, but I still figured that just having a wall with some TVs on might be really good if I ever go ahead with building uh, a TV channel in uh, a building in Brick Nottingham. And that's kind of, well, it's definitely on the list. It's not sort of very advanced or anything. So uh, if I do do that, then the sort of uh, editing suite, mixing desk sort of thing can definitely use these stickers, presumably. Uh, but that was quite cheap. Um, and Mrs. Hood really loves Wonder Woman, actually. So I've actually watched a film that that set is based on, the uh, Wonder Woman 1984 film. And, and it's actually okay. Uh, I wasn't going in with much hope 
uh, of it being any good, but it, it was quite good. Uh, definitely better than the no- normal Wonder Woman film, the first one that uh, that they did uh, recently-ish. Um, and it always helps that uh, Wonder Woman herself, Gal Gadot, as it uh, is, very easy on the eye. Uh, anyway, I digress. So here's another sticker sheet. You can see it's quite sticker sheet heavy. Uh, and this one is from an old jungle set, the Jungle Exploration Site, 60161. Uh, and I got this for two reasons, really. One, uh, for this sort of map, which I've got upside down, which has got all the contours on, and kind of a crash plane. And I thought I could use that underwater as well, in my underwater scene. Maybe they're sort of exploring the underwater depths. And although those sort of spot heights have got positive signs, I think we can probably imagine that it's kind of the undersea um, uh, contours and and, uh, uh, whatever you'd call it showing there. Uh, Relief map, that's what I was looking for. Uh, But I also really like these damaged cargo plane stickers because as part of that set, there's kind of a crashed uh, old cargo plane, kind of like it was straight out of an Indiana Jones film or or uh, romancing the stone or something like that. Uh, but I thought I could have the remnants of a crash plane underneath the uh, waves uh, just outside Brick Nottingham as well. So I'm sure they'll come in useful. And this whole sheet was about 50p, so not too bad. Ah, now here was the other extravagance. It was the Stranger Things sticker sheet, which was about another £4. So a bit of a <laughs> a flush spend for me because I'm notoriously tight. Uh, so that's from set 75810, the upside down from 2019. Uh, and I'm going to use this big Stranger Things one as another advert because uh, obviously they watch TV in uh, my city, Brick Nottingham. So why would they not have an advert on a billboard for an upcoming TV program of Stranger Things? So that's good. And Quite frankly, possibly the best sticker that LEGO have ever done is the sort of Jaws parody movie poster of Shark with a minifigure swimming there with a giant shark coming up from underneath. That's just absolutely fantastic. Uh, And then we've got some cardboard boxes, some brick details, uh, and they're probably all the useful ones. Maybe the wanted poster. Mm, maybe not. Uh, yeah, so that's really nice. So another extravagance, but expect to see these two large adverts in Brick Nottingham relatively soon. So then it was down to my usual uh, ploy of going through absolutely all the other things that are available in a city uh, to see in a city in the uh, store rather to try and find as many bricks that I can use as possible. Uh, so I've got quite a few of these three high bricks these will be used to support now you'll know uh having seen my last fairground ride video these will be used to support the upper layer on top of the lower layer because these three uh, tall bricks are very uh, useful for that being exactly the right height uh then i bought some of these angled roof pieces and these are for my chicken coop actually for my farm Now, I've actually got my chicken coop here because I remembered to bring it because I knew I had these pieces coming. So this is the chicken coop that I've just pulled out of the farm and it actually looks really good. But uh, originally when I thought I wanted to do it, I wanted a red roof so it matched all the other red roofed buildings in my farm. So I bought these uh, and there was one part I had so I didn't need that. Uh, And I was actually going to just use these to make a kind of roof that was angled on all four sides rather than that one. So we'll have to see which one's better. I'm not entirely sure. That's come off easily. Ah, uh, you see, I think I might have been right. Do tell me what you think, but I think that now fits in much better with the rest of my farm. Yeah, I think I'm going to keep that. So I'll put that back in my bits boxes. Uh, other things in here include the fence posts for the farm itself just so I can use the one by one by three bricks rather than three one by one by ones and these so I can build a wonderful beehive for my um, uh, beekeeper as part of the new series 21 minifigures now I've never used these pieces before because they're pretty new they've got the studs on three sides Uh, and it's that sort of ability that enables you to build kind of a box that can take studs on absolutely all sides So, as I say, that's for the Series 21 Beekeeper. Uh, So, I think I'll have all the parts to build uh, one of these beehives that I've designed, or in fact two, uh, 
later on. So I'll build those and make that part of this video. But essentially it's a big box with uh, <laughs> loads of studs on all sides uh, so we can give it the kind of slatted appearance that those very traditional hives have. Uh, yes, yeah, so I think that's all the pieces of note from that bag. Some bigger bits. Now, first of all, I've got four of these small ugly rock pieces or panel rock pieces, some people call them, in dark brown. Uh, and obviously these can be used both ways. Uh, some people just use them all one way in, in great big lines, kind of like that, and it looks very uh, repetitious and doesn't look that good. But um, having them like that just creates uh, a bit of contrast, and obviously you can have them overlapping and all sorts. But I got some in dark uh, brown because if I'm going to be doing some underground scenes underneath my mine and so on, I figured I'd probably need them. And these were 40 pence each, which is actually quite a good price for pieces of that size. So that's good. Uh, and then this piece is the bottom part of this, which is the great big uh, kind of what do you call it? Cockpit, I suppose, piece for the crashed plane that is going to take the stickers there. And indeed, that would have been what it was from when this guy parted out uh, this set to get that sticker sheet. So I think it's straight from there. So it's one of those uh, planes that has the sort of nose engine on the front, old propeller style, uh, and it'll have those stickers on, like I say, and be kind of hanging off at a bizarre angle underneath the water uh, in pieces having crashed. Uh, that's for that. Uh, that's one of those train end pieces. I tend to buy those when I see them at a good price. There's only one, sadly, here, but nonetheless. Uh, oh, here's some bigger bits. Ah, yes. Right, so those ones are for the ground uh, underneath, or on top of, rather, my fairground for the grass in bright green. That is the solitary wing of the sort of broken, uh, broken up aircraft. So that's very good. And then this, very vital. <laughs> And very costly as well, uh, because that's the that's the piece that this sticker goes on, of course. Uh, but that was another two pounds, yay! <laughs> so this advert will have cost me six pounds by the end of this, uh, which is uh, yeah, not a price I'm happy to pay in a way. But I did, I did, I just went for it because I really, really liked that advert, as I say. Um, then, ooh, let's make a bit of space over here to tip this bag out. Big bits and small bits. So they don't do uh, plates in this bright green colour in all the sizes you get in some colours. So generally I just buy all the smaller uh, sizes when I see them at a good price. Uh, and that includes even as small as 4x4 four four or 2x4 because uh, around all those rides I'm going to have to kind of make a patchwork to sort of leave the holes for the mechanisms to come out just like I did in that uh, space spinner ride. So um, essentially it's important to get a variety of these because there aren't every uh, permutation available. Uh, and then I've got a black plate here, some corner ones. I think these are for my train builds, to be honest. And I think these blue, red, yellow and white smaller plates, uh, some of you will be pleased to hear, are for my uh, GBC train car because you very much wanted to have all of the ginormous balls from the ginormous ball corporation uh, in some sort of container or train wagon going around my city. Uh, and I need all these colours for the um, all the um, logo, essentially, which is multicoloured, as you know. And then a great big bag of minifigures. Very interesting. So much like many um, Bricklink vendors, they tend to buy sets either at full price or on discount when on discount and part them out, i.e. split up all of the uh, parts into their drawers and make them available for people to buy. Uh, and as a result, they get quite a lot of minifigures and sometimes they sell them on really cheaply. Now I know that I'm going to have to fill pretty much my entire fairground with loads of queues and lines of people waiting for rides and just to make it hustle bustle sort of scene. So I'm going to need an absolute load of minifigures. So for a while now, whenever I've seen one between about a pound and a pound fifty, uh, I bought them because essentially I can mix up all their pieces and make loads of different people uh, and, and try and fill areas like that. And I think a pound to a pound fifty for a new minifigure is, is a reasonable amount to pay, to be honest. You aren't going to get them much cheaper than that anyway. Uh, you know, you might see a really good one for two pound fifty or something, but when you start scaling that up, it can become quite expensive quite quickly. So 
let's see, we've got this one and this one, which are just two normal people, boy and a girl, and they're uh, just from the modular poolside holiday set, 31067, so clearly this vendor had bought that set a couple of times and parted it out, and they're about pound twenty each or something. We've got Harry Potter. Now I can't use Harry Potter as Harry Potter, or with his skin tone, because I make everyone yellow in my city, just so everyone's the same. But I did like his zippy top, and I do like his midi uh, size legs. So they aren't the short ones, they aren't the long ones, they're the middle ones. Uh, and then Harry Potter hair, some unfortunate person will have to get that. But very good there as well for the price. Then I got four more, which was the entire family from the 21318 treehouse. So there's dad, uh, there is mum or mom, depending on where you're from. Lots of really good pieces there. Ooh, focus, there we go. Winky face, normal face. Yeah, so there's mom, uh, and then we've got daughter. Obviously a tomboy there in a sort of climbing gear or what have you. And a bit of trouble with lighting and focus today. Hope that's coming out all right. Uh, and then uh, uh, the boy as well. But these have got really good pieces and just swapping all these around, they'll be great for people riding all my rides and playing all of my carnival games and so on. So very good value. Uh, and then there were two more. There was this lady, I think it's from the uh, modular bookshop. But again, oh, there we go. Good face, good hair, and another one of those brown tops, but I'm sure I can use those all over. And then, not that I need any racing people at all, because I've got an absolute load, but here is another one. I just liked him because of all this uh, printing on his front there, and it's all sort of shiny and nice, you know, on a nice sort of gunmetal grey, and we've even got these adverts on the back. Uh, and that is from the McLaren Senna Speed Champion set 75892. So maybe I can have somebody just walking around in that with without the gloves on or without the helmet. I don't know. But yeah, he's probably driving a car, isn't he? So there's that. Uh, and then we got two animals, often my favourite uh, part of halls. So this is actually a dog that I didn't have. Now, it looks like a lot of other dogs that are quite similar, but it's just the colouring that's different. It's in dark orange, and it's kind of that Alsatian, sort of German Shepherd-type uh, shape. Uh, but he's also got that sort of colouring there on the nose and uh, black on the end. So that makes a very good addition to my dog collection. He's quite uh, kind of foxy in a way, isn't he? But he was actually part of quite a few sets. Uh, well, three, I think it was, including Winter Post Office, 10222 uh, and it just so happens that the sets that this uh, bad boy came in uh, I just didn't have so he's kind of passed me by uh, but I've rectified that now by getting him here uh, and then <laughs> some people pointed out that I was missing a bright pink pig from my farm uh, and there was one here and I don't really need it because I've got enough pigs on my farm but I thought yeah go on then I'll get it. Uh, so this has been in two sets, including 21322, Pirates of Barracuda Bay. Uh, and it's not the one with the eyelashes. There's another one in this color with sort of really sort of long eyelashes, and that's part of a Nexo Knight set. Uh, so I don't have that one either. So this is partially to feed my collections. Uh, my name is Robin, and I'm a brick addict. It's been zero days since my last build. Um, but also because I thought I might be able to use this as a sign for a butcher's shop. Or something similar. Uh, so yeah, I really like that. It's a very interesting piece in a nice bright colour. So happy to have that as well. So as if that wasn't enough, because this order's pretty good so far if you ask me, we have got another bag. Tip that out over here. And this seems to have all the interesting bits in it to be honest. So I've got four of those flame pieces I just keep buying, which I'm going to be using under the sea either a sort of swaying sort of plants all sort of mixed together at different heights. I think it'll look quite good. Uh, or maybe as the sort of tentacles of a jellyfish, kind of more like that. But either way, I think they look really good. Uh, and these ones are from set 41186, Azari and the Goblin Forest Escape. Note me either, uh, which kind of seems to be a rocket-powered chariot, but it does have some very cool 
uh, side builds of carnivorous plants. So I like that set actually. Um, yeah, so that's those. More colourful pieces. I've got neon um, wands, maybe for under the sea. Neon dishes, definitely for under the sea. And neon orange ones as well. Got some train windows, which might be the last pieces uh, of a train build that I've been planning for quite a long while. It's been quite a long and arduous journey buying all of the pieces for this train. Um, I bought these. Two pairs, just as an experiment really, and they're just uh, the more modern type of these green shutters. Loads of sets way, 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 way back, probably in the early 80s or something, had smaller green shutters than these, but it seemed to be virtually every window had them. Uh, and now they've got these, and I thought I'd get some to experiment with, because I might use them as shutters on kind of windows in... Uh, what was I thinking? Yeah, har in my harbour area as kind of facade buildings for industrial use, kind of like warehouses basically, and, and just have them shut uh, as kind of uh, cargo doors, you know, on a, on a second floor or something like that. Anyway, I just got two pairs. There's one pair, two pairs. Um, I got these fence pieces. These are actually for my cattle grid, but I've completed my cattle grid. Uh, so these two are actually to replace two that I stole from somewhere else. <laughs> so you must remember to uh, replace pieces that you've completely borrowed from somewhere else. Uh, and then a very interesting piece, which I've actually got three of, one, two, three, is the big eye sort of dish from that um, uh, Lighthouse of Darkness set, the hidden side one. So they're actually kind of the beacon inside the lighthouse uh, and they're obviously in that context the sort of beady eye that's kind of staring but I thought they could be the top of um, jellyfish or something like that or even a plant maybe in my undersea worst case scenario I'll have them underground which might actually be a better idea as kind of huge sort of toadstools that live underground that might work even better actually kind of just thought of that but that's a good idea kind of looking at them inspired that idea uh, and then some random bits, including lots of these horn pieces in red, which I'm going to use uh, on my giant sea creatures in my undersea area. These white uh, cheese wedge pieces that are going to be uh, the walls of my um, beehives that I'm going to show you in a minute. Uh, what else is of interest? Ah! Another extravagance. It is a little hologram Leia, Princess Leia from Star Wars. Uh, that is part of the set 75270, Obi-Wan's Hut. Uh, one of the most iconic scenes ever in Star Wars, I'm sure you'll agree. Uh, and that's just the little layer that's projected by R2-D2 for everyone to see. It'd be quite a good fun Easter egg to kind of have that going on in Brick Nottingham. Uh, if not, it'll just uh, be part of my mini Star Wars Lego collection, which I haven't got very much just uh, in this room um, and then I've got a trident for my Atlantis minifigures under the sea. They only had one, annoyingly. Uh, and I think that is everything of interest. Right, I'm going to build a couple of these beehives uh, to show you what my little design is for them. All right, so this is my little beehive build. Give you a bit of a 360 on that. And it's... Quite compact. It's about the right scale, I think, for a minifigure to be uh, using. Uh, and it's mainly made out of those white cheese wedge pieces you can see. Uh, and the lid is one of the series minifigure bases uh, in white. Uh, and if you remember, they came from the Lego Movie 2 series. So you may already have a few of those. Uh, and essentially, we're just getting two of those bricks I showed you earlier that have got the studs on the side on three sides. Uh, and getting two of those, they're almost completely covered in these slats. Uh, and then we can attach those to the underside of this piece, like that. Uh, and then, so that's most of it done. And then we just need one of these one by one by two, or rather it's one by one by one and two thirds pieces that's doing kind of the same job on the back. And that will fill in that surface like that uh, and then on the front we need just a one by one with 
uh, stud on the side to kind of go in there and ugh, connect like that. And that just leaves the little doorway for the bees. Uh, and I've got uh, a one by one tile in white just to kind of represent the kind of landing pad for that. Uh, and they will need some other tiles, uh, rather plates, so they can kind of attach to whatever surface I'm attaching them to, which I think will be one of the roofs of Brick Nottingham. But with two hives like that, or apiaries, I don't know why they're called apiaries, it must be something to do with Latin or something, um, then I think that'll look like a really good scene on one of the rooftops of Brick Nottingham. And then all the bees can basically fly from there homes here uh, to all of the wonderful flowers around my city including those in that other rooftop uh, near this station with all the flowers on the rooftop garden uh, and basically make loads of honey for all of the people in Brick Nottingham. So I quite like that little build. Tell me what you think of those uh, and I think it's quite easy to replicate once you've got those modified bricks of course. So yeah, cool. So all in all, pretty good haul I reckon. Well, I think that's been another successful order, actually, given it all started from me trying to get this advert from the Monkey Kid set to decorate my city with. I think we've managed to get quite a lot of interesting pieces to do quite a lot of interesting projects, including the mini builds of another uh, billboard being the Stranger Things one, this crash plane, these uh, apiaries for the bees of Brick Nottingham, improvements to the hen house and all sorts of wonderful decorative pieces, including these um, mushrooms that might be underneath the soil of Brick Nottingham. Maybe they're infectious or causing some sort of uh, outbreak. I've got no idea at the moment, but that's quite an interesting idea. Uh, and lots more people to populate the city, of course. So yeah, it's been a really good one, I think. Uh, and it's all new pieces, so I don't even need to wash anything. Fantastic. So as always, thank you very much for watching. It is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And if you value this channel, there are many ways in which you can support it. Do check out the links in the description below. Uh, apologies if there's been any problem with the uh, lighting quality on this one. I really have done everything uh, as normal. I can't really tell, but just on my small screen, it has looked a bit intermittent at times, but we'll see what we can do on the edit. Uh, and next time on Robin Hood Bricks, we'll be back in Brick Nottingham for another fairground update for Fairground Fridays. Uh, I was going to do the tables next, just so I can show you some of the uh, builds that we've already done, getting put into, maybe not their final positions, but in position nonetheless. But I really can't start any of that until I've got my blind in, that which is the replacement for the uh, real life window <laughs> of my house um, that will replace that curtain. Uh, because as soon as I start building all of that fairground in, I'm literally not going to be able to reach. So we may have to have a, me uh, a reshuffle of the order of things, uh, unless that arrives, well, pretty much today. <laughs> so uh, until next time anyway, see you!